please please introduce yourself. Yes, hello, my name is Elise. And I'm Jake. Nice to meet you. Well, um, welcome to our great land of California here. Ah, uh, thank you. I know you guys, it's not the sunniest day, but we're going to make it sunny inside tonight. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Lots of energy. So we're, we're loving the band. Uh, you're spreading the word, you know, here in America. I know things are happening, you know, in Europe and everywhere for you. Give us a little idea how you guys came to make music. Like growing up, when did you start singing and who were your favorite singers who inspired oh. you? Um, well, it was mostly my family that inspired me because I grew up in a very musical family. Uh, my grandfather was a very talented uh, jazz guitar player and my mom always sang my grandmother was a singer uh, so it's mostly on my mom's side but also my father's side is very musical but they chose other things <laughs> yeah. uh, but they inspired my parents inspired me to sing and so I sang every day uh, I grew up listening mostly to metal and uh, death metal because my brother and my father played this kind of music mm -hmm. every day but then I explored a band called ABBA Mm. Abba. Abba. And I was blown away. <laughs> I was like watching the DVD, live DVD from uh, Australia, probably 100, 200 times. Like, uh, that's the only thing I want to see. And I, so many catchy songs. Yeah, and I was like, I just knew You want to sing along. I want. Mamma mia. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be one. I wanted to do that. So that's when I knew, like, this is what I want to do. And, and on the hard side, who were some of the hard rock bands that caught your ear? Oh, I, I must say that Freddie Mercury is my favorite artist and singer and their music queen. That's yeah. like, uh, I think they're best like in the world, best band. So they, they're part of the blueprint for your band? I would say in so, In your yeah. DNA? Yes. Okay, great. And how about you? Um, can you repeat the question again? Well, I mean, what at what age did you start singing and getting interested in making music and who were your heroes? Who yeah, made well, you want to do this? Yeah, I, I grew up with my um, at my grandma's place when I was really, really young, and my uncles were like seven, ten years older than me. So mm -hmm. when I was like four, they were four, fourteen. So they mm -hmm. went through this, you know, like youth stage of mm -hmm. like finding music and stuff like that, and they were really into metal. Yeah. And uh, so um, I was growing up with bands like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, mm -hmm. um, Halloween, mm -hmm. and bands like that, Dokken, uh, Bon Jovi, Europe, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm more from that uh, vein when it comes to music and uh, uh, my, my childhood idols were Halloween mm -hmm. and uh, the, the reason why I became a singer or why I started to sing was uh, I really liked Michael Kiske in Halloween so mm -hmm. I really tried to impersonate him, you know, I tried mm -hmm. to sing like him uh, when I was younger and I, I started my career like playing in power metal or heavy metal bands back then. Mm -hmm. And what was the first big like arena show or the big production that you first saw that like blew you away? Yeah, but that was with ABBA. Um, was that yeah, that's a DVD when they played their live show in Australia. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you I got to see them live. Oh, you mean live. Nee, the thing is like I couldn't afford going to live shows. So I didn't, I didn't go to see anything, anyone. I wanted to see Michael Jackson, but I, we couldn't afford the tickets. So but but I, later on, what was the first like big show you saw that was just like, well, wow, that's that's how you do it. Okay, well, that must have been when I toured with Camelot for the first time, and I got the chance to play at Rock and Ring, and I saw Kiss perform, huh? <laughs> and that 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 show was really great. Yeah. Uh, when they like, you know, they fly up Bombs and down, going like, off and going on this flying light, on like, the stage. Out of the, out. Yeah, and the drum set, like drum kit, like raised. Yeah, elevated. Down. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so that was the first uh, big show I saw. Like. Yeah. How about you? Do you remember the first big one? First big one that I saw myself. I don't know. I I never. Uh, I was never one of them that went to big shows to like buying a ticket but I used mm -hmm. to work as a pyrotechnician back in the days mm -hmm. so I've been touring with like I've been doing Kiss, I've been doing Beyonce, I've been doing Merle Crue, uh, Judas Priest, Guns N' Roses and stuff like that so I've been a part of like all these big productions and when you you know like working with all these mm -hmm. big stars you you know like you wish some days that okay like this is mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do with my own band so sure. 
So, so you get inspired. I've been inspired by a lot of these big shows, um, like oh, that's how you do it, or, or that's what we're gonna do, or something yeah. like that in the future. But uh, don't really remember my first big show like that. Um, it's total blank in my head. It was like matter. the first show, like was yeah. that big. Now working I, with I, these... I think it was like an Iron Maiden show in Gothenburg, okay. like two thousand one or something like that, or or. A festival. Okay. I went to festivals a lot when I was like 18, 19, but like when you were 18, 19, you don't, you tend to not remember much of the festival you were at because you mm. were there to drink a lot of beers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, working with the other bands behind the scenes in production, what, what are the biggest eye openers? What did you learn? You know, whether it be how to pace yourself to put it all on the stage or how to treat people on the road? Or I actually, I actually like, like you know, you have um, an idea about like how it is to be a rock star. Yeah. You know, like when you, grow, when you grow up and you have like these pictures on your walls. Like yeah. I usually had Wayne Gretzky, even though, but but I was, I was mm -hmm. really into hockey. But but uh, you know, I was a big fan of Metallica and stuff like that. And and you have an idea of how things is behind the stage, you know, like you want to have a backstage pass and you want to see how <coughs> yeah, everything was going. Yeah, it's a wild party. And, and, and you, I realized pretty fast, like when I started to, to do that business, when I was like 22, 23, that, okay, it's not very fancy, you know, like you saw them sitting in a corner, yawning, like reading a book or, you know, um, nothing's really cool, nothing cool yeah. is really happening, you know, like, and uh, then, then, <laughs> then when you're coming up to the, the, this point where we are, you know, like, we are exactly the same, even though we're on a smaller scale, but it's the same thing. You come to a venue, you set up the gears, you're, there's a tons of waiting, you do interviews, mm -hmm. you do sound check, then you eat something and then you go on stage. And after the, uh, after the show, that's of course like some party and stuff going on like that. But that was the eye opener for me. That yeah, you know, like, it's show business. It's, it's show business, yeah, exactly. The show is on the stage and behind, now, why is it so important to treat people well? Because sometimes you hear about the divas or the rock stars that, you know, order everybody around and people don't like them. And, you know, but these days there's so much importance in touring and getting along with other bands and, of course, your crew. Why, why do you feel it's so important to treat people well and, you know, form a family? Well, I would say, at least for me personally, I think that's whatever person should focus on, no matter what profession you have. Treat the people around you with respect and be a nice person and you will be treated well back. <laughs> so I don't think there is like a difference in our business compared to other businesses. If you're like extremely talented, like I, I would say Lady Gaga or whatever, I think that you can behave exactly how you like because people want to book you anyways because people are mostly into, you know, earning the money. And if they know that they can earn money on you, you can be like the worst person if you want to. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think it's just personal, actually. Sure. But for me, like I said, I, I would never. And actually, I think that it's also most important thing to treat the fans well because it's thanks to the fans that we're able to do this so Absolutely. i am and we are extremely grateful for the fans are your boss yeah, yeah they absolutely. are absolutely yeah and i would never you know think about treating anyone different or bad in any way yeah but of course i mean like sure it's it's always nice to come to a venue and they if you have a good reputation it they treat you better, if, mm -hmm. and that's always nice because this is our life now. Sure. We don't, this is like where we spend all our time, and it makes it easier if, if people are positive and nice. Yes. Well, tell us about the latest record. You know what you guys are most proud of achieving with that? Because I know every record's another step, just like this tour of America. You keep it growing. So with with the latest record, what are you most excited that you've achieved or? you know, done creatively. I think that this, well, I'm proudest of with this album when it comes like to achievements is that this album was the, the album that actually put us on the map a little bit, you know, like, because like it's been played a lot on radio here. Uh, it's gone well in Japan as, uh, as always, but also in Europe, you know, like a band is always like the first two, three albums. It's a little bit of, you know, 
are you just a fly on the wall or, or will you stick there, you know? And, and I think that this album was the, the one that, you know, spread the name of Amaranth. You know, like we're, as I said, being played on radio, we're like you see our songs being played on like the, the, the playoffs in NHL, for example, and the, like, like stuff like that. And, and um, that is a great marker on where the fourth album is gonna continue from. Because like it can be, so like as you said, first album came here, then the second and the, you know, the... the progression. Yeah, the progression that, that it's meant to be. But for, mm -hmm. for most bands it's a little bit like this. Mm -hmm. Our career has... Having, steady. Yeah, a steady slope up. And, uh, and um, I think that uh, also when it comes to like the, the music itself, I think we found ourselves a little bit. You know, like we've been playing around with... with a lot of stuff from the first and the second album and, and you still hear all that stuff in the third album but with a more modern touch as well. Amazing. How about you? Um, well, no, I, I, I just... Uh, I agree. Like, it's an amazing feeling right now that we are in, you know, that our song is playing here on radio. Like, Octane, we're so grateful to them for playing Dropped and Simple. And uh, it's just incredible, like, to see how we started and how our sound was back then compared to now. And I think that we're, I'm most proud that we dared, that we were brave enough to, to keep our uh, sound the way we uh, vis had the vision. We had the, our vision and we, we followed that vision. And uh, that feels, right now it feels good if we, if we, the... <laughs> If the reviews would be bad, uh, we wouldn't feel that good about it, of course. But. but you do it from the heart, so whether the critics like it or not, it's you, and that's what's important, is you've evolved organically. Yeah. yeah. You know? And Tell I think that's the best, like, no, sorry, I think that's the most important thing with everything you do in life. Even if you, uh, like, if you just do whatever you feel is right for you, you will never regret it. Because mm -hmm. uh, I've been, like, in many competitions, along with our vocal competitions and, like, songwriting competitions, whatever. Yeah, and I feel like if I'm proud of my product, and if I know that it's real for me, it, I can take the critics. And I guess that's what every person should do. Like, trust yourself and do whatever feels right for you, because you never know. Like, sure. Well, I know this is a, an amazing tour here of America coming to an end tonight, your final show. And you've got some great bands, I Prevail and Santa Cruz, uh, playing with you. Yeah. What have been some of the highlights, you know, of being to America this time? Uh, it's always a highlight to come yeah. here because like um, especially you know like touring in the summertime when the weather is good you know like mm -hmm. it's pretty good to have a, a tour like this at this time of year because uh, like we've just had the fucking worst winter back home mm -hmm. and you know like a lot of black <laughs> and, and like every time you walk, look out your window it's like dark mm -hmm. and uh, so, so that is a great thing because like you get more energy from from the sun yeah. and that, now when we get home it's summer in Sweden so you know like mm -hmm. hopefully it will extend our summer a little bit but but um, highlights on this tour has been the audience of course because like if you've been down like you felt bad or you're like, oh, I long for home or whatever. When you go out on a stage and you have like 600 people in the audience screaming and, and then you realize that, okay, we're here to do something for them and they're giving us the energy. So, so I won't say all the shows have been a highlight because like we, we always get so much back from the fans. Sure. So you can feel it growing, more people finding out about the band. Definitely. People bringing their friends. Saw you last time. Yes, there was one show we played in Denver. I think we raised our the amount of the audience with two hundred percent. That's wow. pretty good. So we hopefully, if we continue like that, we can play really big. Yeah. yeah. Arenas. Now, all that you've seen through your years in the business, what advice you give to the young singers, the young bands coming up today? It's a different business world. But to make creatively great songs and great performances, what what advice do you give? Uh, the only advice I can give, uh, which I think about myself a lot still, is to like don't focus on the business. Focus on what you feel that you have to do yourself and what you think 
uh, you can give to other people. And if you just focus on that and yeah, practice is always a good advice if you want to become better at something. Yes. But just don't like, because that's, I think it takes away a lot of the creativity to focus too much on the business don't or I have to it. be famous or I have to make, you know, oh, money and stuff. Yeah. So don't take it too serious. I mean, like, do whatever you feel like makes you feel good, actually. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, advice to, to younger people? Yes, like talent business, coming yeah. up. I'd say that, as Elise said, but, but if you have a vision that you want to play music or something like that, I think the most important thing is that you should not change. You know, like, don't, if you want to play jazz, but jazz is totally out, but you love playing jazz, continue playing jazz then because like mm -hmm. one day or another you're gonna make it if you believe in yourself and uh, there, there, there are so many bands out there that tries to uh, transform their music into something that is uh, hip or or like commercial just now or you know like to, to get the oh the trend uh, yeah. yeah exactly but I'll also get the um, shortcut you know yeah. through through success yeah. and, and and sometimes it helps and 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 it works but usually bands like this go up and then straight down yeah. shortcut to back to yeah back. yeah it's a shortcut back to, yeah. to where you started as easy well easy come easy go yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah that's what i mean folks and recently oh what should i do to become you know this big or whatever but uh, of course i mean we also have a dream and that's also one of my biggest uh, inspiration uh, Tips. <laughs> Tips, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, so mm -hmm. just don't stop dream or, you know, I, I don't think anything is impossible. Like, everything is possible. If you dream it, find a way to be it. Absolutely. And if you have a goal, just like strive t towards it and it makes it like the way to get there easier. Well, we thank you both so much. Can't wait for a great show tonight and we love to spread the word on the the new record and can't wait to see your audience grow next time you come back. Thank, Thank you, you very much. we can't wait to be back. <laughs>